product life cycle. In this video, we'll look at how you can identify the different stages of product life cycle and assess how it could influence the marketing decisions that are made by an organization. First, let's think about what is the product life cycle. Well, the product life cycle is effectively like a lifespan. Just like humans, every product or service has a lifespan. And we like to think about that lifespan looking something like a human. So you start as a baby, you then might grow into a child, you then might grow into an adult, where you start to mature, for example, as you can see there, and then you ultimately start to decline into old age, and ultimately we end up with death that we don't like to think about. That, effectively, is the product life cycle. Define the product life cycle are the stages that every product or service will go through from its development all the way through to its withdrawal. An easy way to look at the product life cycle is as a diagram. In this diagram, on the vertical axis, we have revenue and costs, and along the horizontal axis, we have time. And you can see that where they intersect is actually at the figure zero. So ultimately, at some stages, you will actually be spending more money on the product than what it's going to generate. That stage is known as the development stage, and that is the first phase of the product life cycle. This phase tends to focus where market research will be undertaken, that could be primary and secondary research, as well as expensive research and development will be undertaken as you develop the product to meet the needs and wants of the customer. Following your development stage, you then introduce your product. At the introduction phase, you tend to see large-scale use of promotional strategies as well as pricing strategies with the aim of increasing your sales and developing your brand awareness. At the introduction phase, you may find that you use price skimming, where you may charge a higher price to attract the premium customers who want to be the first users of the product. Effectively, you are paying for the exclusivity of being the first people to get their hands on a new product. Of course, you may try to look at discounting if it's a highly competitive market and you're penetrating the market looking to try and enter maybe where you have no existing market share. As you can see, the different strategies all depend on what the market conditions are like for the product that you're entering. Following the introduction stage, we have the growth phase. In the growth phase, you tend to find that sales are increasing by a rapid amount. Promotion will probably be quite heavy still, and you may find that it's going to be above the line promotion in your face. Things like TV, radio, newspaper, social media advertising will be happening to ensure that it goes to the mass market at this point. Pricing strategies, of course, may start to change. You might find that you've got new entrants in the market, so you have to do competitor pricing. Or you could find that actually you can charge cost plus pricing because you can actually make your profits and make your great returns at this point in the product life cycle. Following the growth stage, you tend to reach what's called the maturity stage, and that's because we reach, like a sponge, the saturation point. This is where the market has had enough of your product. Everybody's got it who typically wants it and sales are starting to drop off. Now you've got to start to think about how can you encourage customers to buy your product. It could be that you start to adapt your pricing strategy. So you maybe lower them, do some discounting, for example, or you could start to try and look at what we like to call an extension strategy. And that is finding a new way. It could be either finding a new market or it could be trying to find something new about your product, changing the packaging, for example, or changing the place that it's sold in, or maybe even changing the experience the customer gets in your product to the physical process. And you may look to do that because that's a way of extending the life cycle and giving your product a whole new lease of life. I will record a video that's separate about the extension strategies and how they can be used. Finally, the stage that you don't want to get into is the decline stage. 
Now, ideally, most businesses try to avoid going into decline because typically it's not good to see your product die, especially after you've invested a large amount of money to even develop it and actually grow it and establish it in the marketplace. But if it was to go into this stage, you tend to find prices start to fall. At this point now, you tend to be discounting heavily and you're probably not even marketing your product anymore now. These are the sort of products that you typically will find in Poundland or the discount shops towards the end of their lifespan because ultimately the company maybe has moved on to a new product. Of course, you want to get to the extension strategies and you never want to reach decline. And you always look to the extension strategy at the maturity phase rather than when it enters into decline because you're losing market share. Now, the product life cycle is great on its own, but what we really want to do is try and link it to the marketing mix. Now, hopefully, you're aware of what the marketing mix is, and if you're not, I'm going to just uh, briefly cover it. However, I will make a separate video again about this topic. Now, the different stages of product life cycle will affect what you do within the marketing mix. Now, if you're not aware what the marketing mix is, well, typically at GCSE, we like to say it's the four P's, the price, the place, the product, and the promotion. However, as you get more advanced with your marketing and with your business studies, you will probably find that we start to talk about additional P's. Now, there is a belief in business at the higher level that there's seven P's. There actually could be nine or 11, depending on whose theories you read. Most common ones you'll see are physical environment, people, and processes. But you may also come across packaging being used as a separate P. Other people, of course, would argue that forms part of the product and promotion. You can see how these have been expanded and adapted. Now, for the rest of this video, I'm going to focus on the main four to keep this simple. But you'll start to see what I'm going to do. So let's try and apply the marketing mix and the product life cycle together. So let's start by looking at the development phase. So in the development phase, product-wise, you'd probably find extensive market research has been undertaken. This could be primary research where you might have focus groups, for example, who are giving feedback on maybe your prototypes that you've developed. You may also have extensive primary market research taking place to find out your customers' needs and secondary research looking at what's happening in the market and maybe competitor pricing and what position your competitors are taking. Of course, you're going to have heavy expenditure on your research and development and trying to develop that right product to meet the needs of the customer. Pricing-wise, you may start be thinking about the in-price skimming, where you're going to try and target the early adopters. So you might be looking at ABC1 categorization when it comes to market segmentation. This is because they might be more excited to sign up for the exclusivity of being the first users of your product. Of course, for that, they're going to pay a high price. Promotional wise, you may be starting to look at direct promotion methods. So you might be trying to target your loyal customers, maybe from your mailing list and your customer databases that you've got. Or you might try and target specific market segments. Like I said before, the ABC one, you might buy in that Acorn data that you can target them. But it'd probably be they targeted at this phase because you want to try and establish a market without spending a great deal on marketing to the mass market if you're not really sure when that product will launch these are probably your fan club and you know apple is a really good example of having a, a promotional strategy that works when they start talking about developing new products and then you've got your placement now again typically you might look to try and focus on a direct distribution channel now that could be because you want to build a relationship with the customer and it also could be because potentially if you're developing new products you may have issues now you want to control that experience the customer gets and that could come down to the process link of the, four, the other P that I talked about before. But ultimately, it gives you the ability to address those issues and maybe even do a sample target market. And that's how you would start to tie in the marketing mix and the product lifecycle together. I've only done it here in this example for the video for the development phase. I would advise, though, that you do it for every single phase in the same strategy as what I've just set out in this example here. So by the end of this video, now you should understand the purpose of the product life cycle and how it relates to an organization. You also should be able to consider and assess the different stages the product life cycle can impact on the marketing mix and the strategy and the tactics that are adopted. And finally, you should be aware that a different stage of the product life cycle will impact on the choice and the use of the marketing mix that you select. 
Hopefully, that has given you an insight into the marketing mix and the product lifecycle and how they can link together.